we can now start our discussion of probabilistic convergence. The first notion of probabilistic convergence, also known as stochastic convergence, that we will talk about is convergence in probability. So uh, consider a sequence of random variables x1, x2, and so on, defined on the same probability space. Um, we say that the sequence of random variables xn converges in probability to a random variable x if and only if the probability that the uh, random variable xn differs from x by more than some positive value epsilon converges to zero as n goes to infinity for any real number epsilon bigger than zero. What does this mean? This means that the probability converges to zero as a sequence. Um, to, to, you know, to remind ourselves what does it mean uh, for a sequence to converge, a real valued sequence An converges to A, okay, real valued sequence An converges to some value A uh, if, uh, you know, um, um, you know, consider subsequent values indexed by n of a n. They may be increasing and decreasing, but, you know, for any arbitrary epsilon, draw an epsilon window um, around the value a, right? Mm, eventually the sequence is going to be around um, this, two ips uh, this epsilon window around the value a. Mathematically speaking, for any epsilon, okay, there exists a n sub zero um, with respect to the epsilon, there is a, a large, there is a small enough number n zero such that for all n after n zero, um, a n is within an epsilon neighborhood of a. Okay, so this is what it means for a real sequence to converge and our probabilities converge as a real sequence. And that is called convergence in probability. An important example of, the, uh, of convergence in probability is the weak law of large numbers. Weak law of large numbers, which we abbreviate here as WLLN. For this, we are considering a sequence of iid that is independent and identically distributed random variables zi's with mean mu and variance uh, sigma squared. So uh, let zi be iid with the expected value be mu and the variance equal to sigma squared. We will form uh, the random variable xn, the random that is uh, random sequence xn for all n, where the nth uh, random variable in the sequence is defined as the sample mean of the zi from 1 to n. It, uh, so the sum divided by the number of random variables. Okay? Uh, sample mean. We will now show using Chebyshev inequality that this sample mean converges in probability 
to the actual expectation. Um, so, here, so here is the claim. Uh, to be more precise, let's define a random variable x, which is equal to mu with probability 1. Okay, so this random variable x is equal to the mean of the uh, individual uh, zi's with probability 1. Essentially, it's a constant. Um, so the claim is that xn converge to x in probability as n goes to infinity, of course. Okay, here's the proof. Um, consider the probability that xn minus x is bigger than epsilon. Okay, um, or yeah, let's not use bigger or equal to, uh, let's just use bigger than, bigger than epsilon. Now, uh, according to the definition of convergence and probability, xn will converge to x if and only if uh, this probability converges to zero. So let's try to show that this probability will converge to zero. How to do that? Well, we can start by um, noticing that this probability is equal to the probability that xn minus mu is bigger than epsilon because x is equal to mu with probability 1. Right, um, but then we have Chebyshev inequality which says this probability that xn differs from its mean, how do we know that mu is the mean of xn by the way? Uh, because, um, well, if you look at here, look at this uh, definition of xn, uh, due to the linearity of expectation, it follows that the expectation of xn is 1 over n times n times mu, which is mu. Right. So we have a Chebyshev inequality that says, uh, well, of course, it's the other way around. It is a uh, upper bound, not a lower bound. This probability is less than or equal to the variance of xn divided by epsilon squared. <coughs> right, um, so this is by Chebyshev. But what is the variance of xn? Well, xn is 1 over n times the sum of zi, so the variance of xn is 1 over n squared because of the independence of the zi's, the variance of the sum is n times uh, uh, variance of z1, which is sigma squared, so this is sigma squared over n. Uh -huh. So the variance of xn is decaying to zero like sigma squared over n. Um, so this is then, uh, this shows that the probability that xn minus x exceeds epsilon is less than or equal to sigma squared over n, which goes to zero. Okay. So then, by definition of convergence in probability, we conclude that, you know, by, if you look at the definition of conditional probability, it follows that xn converges to mu uh, in probability. Okay, and this is the weak law of large numbers that we uh, use uh, oftentimes in engineering models when we average, when we take average, when we uh, take averages of independent uh, computations or independent measurements uh, and in daily life as well, whenever we take uh, statistical averages. <coughs>